Ark of the Covenant, the Ethiopian Evidence. Modern day Ethiopians, also known as Habashas or Abyssinians, are a mixed people of East African, Arabian, and ancient Israelite or Jewish descent. Genetic evidence such as a genome study published in the American Journal of Human Genetics reveals that there was gene flow from the land of today's Israel and Syria into Ethiopia 3,000 years ago, which was during the time of King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. Ethiopia's Amharic language, which is the second most spoken Semitic language in the world after Arabic, has served as the country's official language for 800 years. And the Ethiopians as a whole speak Cushitic and Semitic languages. Ethiopia's Semitic languages contain ancient Hebrew and Sabaean words and lexicon. Although Ethiopia plunged into poverty due to war, famine and the overthrow of its 3,000-year-old monarchy and socio-political fabric and its replacement with communism and ethnic federalism, Ethiopia was once one of the four greatest superpowers of the world in antiquity alongside the empires of Rome, Persia and China, as attested by Manichaeus in the 3rd century AD. Historically, the most important book next to the Bible in Ethiopian culture that contains the origin story of the people is known as the Kebranagast, which means the glory of the kings. The Kebranagast, Ethiopia's national epic, is understood to have been compiled in the 14th century AD and contains an account of how the Queen of Sheba, known as Queen Makeda, traveled to Judea in modern-day Israel from her Ethiopian kingdom which today is understood to have generally encompassed modern-day Ethiopia, Eritrea, and Yemen, to meet King Solomon and about how the Ark of the Covenant was brought to Ethiopia with their son Manilik I. The text also contains accounts of the conversion of Ethiopians from the worship of the sun, moon, and stars to that of the Lord God of Israel. Manilik I, the son of the Queen of Sheba and King Solomon, who traveled back to Ethiopia with the Ark of the Covenant, accompanied by Israelites from Judea, would reign and become the founder of Ethiopia's 3,000-year-old Solomonic dynasty. Ethiopia's emperors claimed to be his direct descendants for 3,000 years until the last emperor, Haile Selassie I, was deposed by the communist revolution and military regime in 1974. The Kibranagast, although generally understood to be written or compiled in the 14th century AD, is based on a much older account and contains ancient content that was recorded during the time of King Solomon. According to Dr. Bernard Lehman, a late researcher on the subject, the Kibranagast consists of two intertwined main documents of roughly equal length and a short conclusion. The earliest part is a totally Israelite, that is pre-586 BC, document known as the Sheba Minilik cycle and appears to have been originally recorded during Solomon's reign. The second part, the Caleb cycle, was probably written in about AD 520, on the eve of the Christian invasion of Jewish Yemen. evidence of the Ark's presence in Ethiopia. The most important inscriptional evidence supporting the Ethiopian narrative of the Kibranagast's Sheba Minilik cycle regarding the legend of the Ark of the Covenant having been brought to Ethiopia during the time of King Solomon is found on two of three Sabaean incense burners kept in the church of Abu Nagarima at Adi Akawa a hilltop village 8 kilometers southwest of Wukro, near Mekale in Ethiopia. The church in which the incense burners are kept is sited on a much older ancient structure, 
most probably a major Sabaean temple because the two larger Sabaean incense burners were found a short distance at and below two other hilltop Sabaean structures to the east and west of Adi Akawa. At the eastern side are located the alleged burial of the Jewish Queen Yehudit, Yodit or Ga'awa, who destroyed Aksum in the 10th century, and the ruins of an ancient Sabaean temple as old as 800 BC, nearly 3,000 years old. Sabaean inscriptions there state that the area was part of the realm of Da'amat and was ruled by four named high kings and kings of Sheba and Da'amat three of whom ruled with unnamed high queens and queens of Sheba of a mixed population of red Semitic Sabaeans, blacks, Cushitic, and Hebrews. The inscriptions are the work of professional stonemasons from Ma'arib and modern-day Yemen. The Adi Akawuh inscriptions support the story that a mixed population of Sabaeans, Cushites, and Hebrews, or Israelites, was ruled jointly by kings and queens of Sheba in northern Ethiopia 125 years after Solomon's death and probably much earlier. The inscriptions at Adi Akawuh are one of, if not the oldest mention of the Hebrew people. The chief authority of Hebraic and Israelite influences on Ethiopia is the late British historian Edward Ullendorf, who believed that maybe half of Ethiopia's population was Israelite when Christianity was introduced. When Christianity was first introduced in Ethiopia between the 1st and 4th centuries, Ethiopians practiced ancient Jewish and pagan religions. The Mayaphysite Orthodox Christians of Ethiopia never converted, but transitioned to Orthodox Christianity from Judaism, accepting Jesus of Nazareth as the Jewish Messiah that the Hebrew prophets prophesied about in the Torah or Old Testament known as the Orit amongst Ethiopians. The Ethiopian word for the Ark, Tabot, is understood to be very ancient and the main Western educated authorities on the word, Theodor Noldeke and Chaim Rabin, were both deeply perplexed by the word and concluded that it had come from Arabia or the Medina area during King Solomon's era. The Hebrew Old Testament and Jewish tradition do not record how the Ark of the Covenant vanished, and they do not explain why Azariah, the high priest of Judah, which the Sheba Menelik cycle of the Kebranagast identifies as the son of the high priest, disappeared, and his Zadokite priesthood only reappeared 300 years later. The Sheba Menelik cycle of the Ethiopian Kebranagast is the only document that details the reason. Furthermore, the 14th king of Judah, Manasseh, in the early 7th century BC, placed an idol in the temple and promoted pagan worship as the Ark of the Covenant was evidently absent from the land in Judea. The Sheba Menelik cycle of the Kebranagast contains the Torah or Law of Moses that must have existed during the time of King Solomon because it omits a major part of the laws of Deuteronomy the biblical document that authorities agree was compiled during the reign of Josiah in the 7th century BC. The Sheba Menelik cycle contains the Holiness Code, Leviticus 17-26, which according to biblical scholars is one of the oldest parts of the Old Testament. All of this shows that Ethiopia has a direct and ancient association with the Kingdom of Judea from the time of King Solomon and a culture obsessed even today with the Ark of the Covenant, reflecting the existence of an ancient Israelite state that was nearly obliterated by the pagan Hebraic queen Yodit in the 10th century. When closely studying the traditions of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church and some of its early Judeo-Christian practices, the church seems to have evidently maintained a very peculiar and ancient Judaic rite linked to the presence of the true Ark of the Covenant dating from the time of King Solomon of Israel, known as the procession of the Tabot, the Ark. According to the late researcher Bernard Lehman, this story is supported by evidence in Ethiopia and Eritrea concerning ancient Judaic customs and beliefs, 
Judaic remnant groups, inscriptions, linguistic peculiarities, and the cult of the Ark. The Ark is so central to Ethiopian Christianity that each church must have a replica of the tablet of the true Ark, known as Tzalat. Housed in the Holy Communion altar, now called the Tabot of the New Testament, in the Magdas or Holy of Holies, similarly to the way that the Ark was kept in the Holy of Holies of the First Temple in Judah. The resting place of the true Ark of the Covenant is believed to have been on an island at the Lake Tana for 600 years, and finally at the Church of St. Mary of Zion in Aksum, Ethiopia, the ancient capital of the Ethiopian Solomonic Empire. The Ark is so important that the churches cannot be considered such, without at least one replica of the Ark's tablets bearing the name of the Holy Trinity, a person of the Trinity or the Saints. The Tabot or Tzalat is carried around the church courtyard, and the adherents of the faith fall down before the Ark, blow ancient trumpets known as Kenda Meleket, dance, ululate, and chant in worship in their Semitic tongues, echoing the biblical description in 2 Samuel chapter 6, describing King David and his people dancing before the Ark. Although the Ark is never brought out of its resting place for religious and political reasons, and because nobody but a monastic succession of single monks whose lives are dedicated to guarding it until death due to the Ark's power and holiness can see it with their bare eyes, and only the replicas of the Ark's tablets in every Ethiopian Orthodox Church are brought out of the Mechdes during times of religious celebration, such as the Great Feast of Tumkat or Epiphany, covered in an ornate cloth, hidden from public view. Although nobody but the succession of monastic guardians of the Ark can see it, the traces of its presence, as laid out in the above evidence, are seen in every aspect of Ethiopia's ancient Judaic practices, 3,000-year-old archaeological findings, genetics, language, dynastic heritage, and the cult of the Ark reflecting the ancient practice of the First Temple period that exists nowhere else but in Ethiopia. Only Ethiopians maintain to this day a living tradition around the Ark traceable back to antiquity and connected to the monarchy known as the Solomonic Dynasty that claims direct descent from King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. Although the Ark of the Covenant is not regarded in the modern world as being a particularly Christian sacred relic, but instead an ancient mythical object lost in time and history, the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, an Afro-Middle Eastern Ethiopian Israelite and truly Judeo-Christian church in the most literal sense of the term, claims to be its keeper and holds it to be the foundation of its Judeo-Christian faith rooted in the heritage of King Solomon's ancient Judea. <laughs>